The Drysum lubrication system is usually found in high performance sports cars and supercars. That's because those vehicles undergo huge amounts of g-forces under hard acceleration and during high-speed cornering. A simple wet sum lubrication system won't be able to provide sufficient lubrication for the engine internals under those high g-forces. But in the world of two wheels, regardless of the type, almost all kinds of motorcycles uses the wet sum lubrication system. But there is one brand that uses dry sum lubrication system for its motorcycles, the Harley Davidson. For some people, it might sound funny, because the performance and Harley doesn't really go along all the time. For most of the Harley Davidson motorcycles, the outright performance usually takes a back seat. It's all about the aesthetics and the riding experience. If that's the case, then why the Harley Davidson uses the dry sum lubrication? That's what we are going to find out in this video. The Harley Davidson is one of the oldest brands in the automotive landscape. They have witnessed pretty much every single change that had happened in the automotive world. But some of their products are still considered as a bit ancient for today's standards. That's because the Harley Davidson builds their motorcycle with a certain set of values which they still dearly hold on to even to this day. Harley's this obsession towards their heritage is one of the reasons why the big Harley V-Twins still have a Trisom lubrication system. Back when William S. Harley and Davidson brothers started to build motorcycles, the state of automotive engineering in general was a bit primitive. People were still figuring out the mysteries of the internal combustion engines. But that didn't stop the enthusiasts from wanting to go fast. And back in the day, there was only one option to make the motorcycle fast, and that is to make the engine bigger. But unlike today where everyone just scrapes off the cylinder walls to make the engine big, Harley decided to increase the stroke length. Because back then, people wanted something that is quick right from the get-go, which means engines with a lot of low-end and mid-range torque, and long-stroke engines are known for that. But some issues started to pop up as Harley begins to increase the size and the power of their engines. One of the main issues that Harley had with their big engines was the lubrication. As the automotive engineering was in its early state of evolution, a proper lubrication system was virtually non-existent in the early motorcycle engines. The only lubrication those engines had was when the rider squirted some oil to the engine internals from time to time, which eventually blown out through the chains and exhaust and literally every single other hole that the engine had. With newly found power, that sort of lubrication system is proven to be quite inadequate. Harley had to figure out a way to properly and efficiently lubricate the engine. But again, there were some issues. The long stroke engines are tall. Considering the low ground clearance, which is one of the key factors of the Harley, they had three options to properly implement a recirculating lubrication system. The first option is to raise the mounting points of the engine on the frame to accommodate an oil pan under the engine, which will also require raising the fuel tank, which will then seriously cripple the aesthetics of the motorcycle. Harley being Harley wasn't ready for that. The second option is to fix an oil pan under the engine without changing the engine's mounting points. That will leave the oil pan hanging dangerously low below the frame. Since the people running Harley Davidson weren't stupid, this one also tossed out from the list of considerations. The only option now is to leave the engine as it is and store the oil somewhere else. The engineers came up with a simple but a brilliant idea. They carved up a little space under the seat where they housed the oil tank and the battery and with the help of an oil pump, they delivered the oil into the engine. And there it is, a simple dry sum lubrication system. And Harley has been continuing that tradition ever since. But there is also an exception to this. Their latest Revolution X series engines found in the street road and other street motorcycles features a wet sum lubrication system. But it doesn't seem that Harley is going to stop producing engines with dry sum lubrication system anytime soon. Because their latest Milwaukee 8 series engines also features a dry sum lubrication system. So now you know why the Harley Davidson uses a dry sum lubrication system for their motorcycles. If you guys find this video informative, please give it a thumbs up or if you loved it, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you guys next time, ride safe.